Hello there, uh, my name is Julio Castro. I'm instructional designer here at the University of Florida. I work for the TRIO Center, uh, the Training and Research for Environmental Ocu Engineering Occupations Center. And um, for my f week one artifact, I decided to make a video uh, for two reasons. One, because I'm passionate about MOOCs and I would like to talk about it. And two, because uh, um, I'd like you to hear uh, my voice uh, so that we at least we can meet this way. If you want to leave a feed, uh, some feedback on this presentation, please go to my blog and, and post a comment. I, I, I would appreciate it. I would like to convert this into a full presentation later on. Um, and and the another reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing this is because I'll probably be designing a MOOC for the University of Florida pretty soon on, on an engineering um, subject. In any case, uh, Dr. Tony Bates' webinar inspired me to go ahead and, and try to chip in my five cents on uh, what I would like to change in, the, in my MOOC or any MOOC that I uh, decide to develop. So let's start. You already know there is a slew of, of uh, uh, MOOCs out there. Um, Coursera is the most well-known edX and Udacity, but if, if you make a Google search, you come up with all of these other players. Um, and they're uh, smaller than these three behemoths that you see on the left, but uh, they are still out there, and there are so many MOOCs right now. I mean, if one decides to take on uh, different MOOCs, um, I, I don't think you will have all every time of the day to complete uh, uh, all your lessons. If you try to take, um, I, I don't think there is data on this, but uh, on how many courses you can actually take at the same time, but um, on my experience, uh, I tried once to take three and, and I couldn't complete any. It's it's overwhelming, it's a lot of work, and, and I think uh, that's one of the things that the MOOCs have to change on. Now, um, many people say that this is disrupt an education. Um, to tell you the truth, uh, the only thing new about uh, MOOCs is the fact that they are accessible to everybody and that um, anybody can sign on on them and, and complete any MOOC. But in fact, uh, the techniques and, and, and um, instructional design methods and, and, this and development methods that are used in here have been used on other online courses. Um, but most of the online courses that the, uh, that have been running so far are in a closed system, an LMS. Uh, in this case, all of these courses are offered for free uh, with no, um, no cost to the student and, and then no timetable. Although uh, Coursera, NEDx, and Udacity, many of them uh, have a, a time constraint. If you, if the student wants some kind of, of badge or, 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 or certificate or, or some kind of, of, of evidence that they took the class, then they will have to follow the, the uh, timetable that these courses run on. So actually not, um, no, no, not many of them are synchronous. Uh, most of them have some kind of synchronous activities in them. But um, it is true that the only novel thing about MOOCs is that they are open to everybody. Now, <coughs> I, I recently went to the uh, Florida Distance Learning Association conference and I presented a, 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 I, I, I presented a, a uh, something unrelated to this, but I w attended one of the MOOC, uh, uh, a couple of the MOOC uh, presentations. And one of the things that people started talking about was like, uh, the, the fact that um, there's probably some kind of m MOOC exhaustion or MOOC attrition, if you will. That is that we're so fed up of, of hearing about it. Uh, there's It's in, in the news. You, you can uh, uh, dig in, dig in the uh, newspapers or, or online newspapers, online publications, and you will find one article about MOOCs almost every week. And then bloggers uh, have spilled uh, pages and pages of, of, of uh, opinion on the matter. And so if you just put MOOC on, on, on Google, in a Google search, you get uh, thousands of hits and it's from bloggers, from publications, and there's even specialized publications like the Chronicle of Higher Education that are continuously uh, presenting uh, research and, and, and opinions on, on MOOCs. And um, 
news news break break breaking news about about some some something happening on MOOCs. So uh, I mean, if we are in the education sector, uh, you hear about MOOCs every day, and and some people are, are getting bored on about it. And and I think uh, we've talked about MOOCs. Uh, all the time, and everybody knows what the issue is with MOOCs. But what I haven't heard of, and I think uh, that's w that uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh Bates' presentation uh, um, uh, created this uh, um, created this uh, 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 impulse on me to f to uh, uh, make this uh, uh, video is that. Um, in fact, nobody's talking about on how to change the MOOC so that uh, some of those uh, uh, issues that everybody talk about go away. I think uh, that's what I want to do a little bit here. Although I'm probably going to be short on <laughs> on any solution, but this is what I think um, we can start with. And then uh, I think uh, uh, as time goes on, MOOCs were going to be morphing into something more... Uh, uh, as another tool for education, but I don't think this is going to um, it's going to uh, replace the university. I don't think there's going to be universities that are going to be running MOOCs only. I don't think so. But what I think is MOOCs are going to evolve into something different, and they have to because uh, so far they haven't they haven't proved they haven't proved to be a a, a a reliable way of conveying knowledge and 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 the activities and, and uh, assignments and, and educational methods that they are using are not supporting learning in many cases. So that's where, where I think uh, the MOOCs are going to evolve pretty, pretty soon. So let's start with this. Um, and, and I think mo when in the next slide you're going to see exactly so what's wrong with MOOCs. Okay. The first, uh, the first thing that's wrong with MOOCs is that they have so long videos. Uh, I think everybody complains about that. I've taken MOOCs that have 50-minute uh, videos. I, I just can't bear it. I don't think I can. Um, um, I, ca I can watch a 50-minute video, but after after uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you've lost me. So I think uh, um, MOOCs are moving into that. At least the University of Florida is going to create the, the second round of, of, of MOOCs around this idea of reducing the, n the, the length of time on the videos. Because uh, uh, it's, it's been proven over and over again that long videos do not support learning. So that's one of the issues we know about uh, what's wrong with MOOCs. And m many people still think that uh, uh, 50 minute uh, video lectures uh, work in some somehow. And <coughs> another thing that the MOOCs are, uh, uh, th that something, there's something wrong with the MOOCs is the lack of well-designed activities. And again, uh, I think this, is, this comes from the fact that uh, most of these uh, MOOCs uh, uh, have evolved from uh, in-classroom courses that, that these professors or, or, or the instructors already teach at the university level. And they think that, this, that they can do the same thing they do in the classroom. And in many cases, that's not that's n that that's not that's not going to work in 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 the online setting. So I think that the the, the, the lack of well designed activities is one of the, the issues with MOOCs, in the sense that uh, many of these activities uh, do not uh, do not change any 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 anything on the student. Um, um, multiple choice questions or 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 fill in the blank or 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 true or false are not very good activities, and they call it activities. In many cases, that's what they that, that's what they include in the videos or or outside of the of the of the videos. Um, but in fact, uh, there's a little uh, work around designing very good activities in MOOCs. <coughs> the second thing I see in MOOCs, in my experience, and and other other MOOCs that I've looked at, is that. Um, they they want to cover so much in the, in the l little amount of time they have that they don't strike the right balance between activities and content. So, um, in many cases, they 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 fill out the course with so many content that the student doesn't have time to complete the activities that they have designed. So, striking a balance between 
what uh, the number of activities you want to add in, and the content that you want the student to cover is is crucial to the to the success so to the success of the MOOC, and that's one of the things I'm, I'm going to change, and I'll, I'll talk about it later. Another thing is that there are so many students in signing up for a MOOC that there's very little student instructor contact. Um, most of the time it's by mass email. The instructor sends an email and uh, something on the lines of, of constant contact with, uh, um, you know, hello, uh, your name. <laughs> but the email, everybody receives the same email. So there's, that's the only contact that you ever have with the, with the, with the structure. Most of the times, um, and they tell you to go to the discussion forums and, 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 and interact with other students. And in many cases, some professors have the, the, the resources to get uh, two or three TAs, uh, teaching assistants, that are going to help him run the MOOC. But in fact, there's little instructor-student con instruct uh, instructor contact. And that, I think, is one of the things that's uh, wrong with the MOOCs. And that's one of the reasons uh, of the MOOCs uh, have not been successful so far. And by success, I mean uh, uh, completion rates and, and also uh, uh, grade uh, passing grades. Now, one of the things um, that I think is wrong with the MOOCs is um, they, they have not decided what they want to do with, uh, with the course. Are they trying to? to transfer information to the student um, because in that case uh, the, the course is, is not designed for that. Are they trying to teach a skill? I don't think so. Again, in the previous point I said in, so in many cases the activities are not completed because they have to cover all that content so they are not teaching anything. Um, they are just basically uh, um, asking them to cover all this material before they can uh, start doing something and many of the activities sometimes th do not are not related to what they just the students just uh, cover on, on the material so um, I think this the books need to define exactly what they want to do uh, in, in, uh, in this in this environment so I think based on all of this um, another reason why the r the there's something wrong with the books is the low completion rates it's uh, in many cases again because this is an open system. Anybody can sign up. That doesn't mean that you have to sign up for a MOOC. I mean, it's it's like like uh, m many cases in life where where something's free. You know, just because it's free doesn't mean that you need it or or that you have to take it. Um, it's it's. Um, I think it's that's that's one of the things. Uh, uh, I think the, the the public needs to be educated on. on uh, on on the MOOC uh, movement and exactly what they want to do. I think if if we were to cap the MOOC uh, 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 enrollment, that would uh, probably add some value to the MOOCs because then people will try to fight for a spot. Or if you uh, um, if we if the MOOCs were to develop some kind of of pre-screening process, just to to uh, um, determine if you are worth of taking a MOOC. I think that would be one solution to to this uh, low completion rate. Then, uh, if you sign up, uh, I don't know, a thousand students, you're going to have a higher completion rate because those thousand students are motivated to to finish that MOOC, and and that would change the perception of MOOCs. So, but in the meantime, uh, 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 they they like to say that they had 40, 40, 40 50 thousand people enrolled, but in actuality. They just went in, uh, look a couple of lectures, and then they left. So, uh, I don't think it's it's a MOOC. A successful MOOC means a high enrollment. So, with all this in mind, uh, then why would I want to change on the MOOCs uh, to make them successful? So, what do I want to change, or what changes can I make to MOOCs? That's what I want to show here, and this is uh, the the final part of my presentation. First of all, I will shorten the video lectures. I think this is a no-brainer, and I think uh, they started doing it, and at least the University of Florida will start doing this. Then, <coughs> I think we need to uh, design the activities that teach a skill in MOOCs. Um, I think the problem with MOOCs uh, also is that they w they are very ambitious. I mean, they want to cover many things. They want the student to achieve many things. But I think if you just were to design MOOCs so that the students achieve one thing or a couple of things, that would that would have val tremendous value to MOOCs. Um, and in many cases, teaching a skill would be, I think, the, the way to go. Because um, 
I really doubt MOOCs are going to f morph into into uh, um, uh, university level courses. Um, it's there's not enough time, and and so um, the way they run. So I think that if you can teach a skill, that would be a, 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 a good accomplishment in MOOCs. And I think that's something that I would change in MOOCs. Of course, in order to, to, to teach a skill, uh, that means that we'll have to create more activities that teach that skill. So it's it's very important to, to design uh, a activities that are going to change the behavior of the student, either by uh, actually uh, perform, uh, uh, developing a project, uh, or um, completing a series of steps to uh, um, achieve the goal of the project of a project, or or, or uh, a process that they have to follow in order to uh, reach the uh, achieve the learning goal. I think that's w uh, what I would change in MOOCs too. So, in with that in mind, that means that we will have to sacrifice information content, that is, things that the student need to learn. Um, um, let through through reading or through lectures, I think I think that's that we'll have to decrease the amount of of that uh, part of the MOOC so that the student can devote more time to the activities. And then um, I think that that would teach uh, that would teach more to the student than just reading or uh, watching uh, lecture videos. Another thing that would change in the MOOCs is, is the capping of the number of enrollments. Like I mentioned, if we were to to, to to reduce the the number of students that actually can make to MOOCs, putting some kind of pre-filter in system, I don't know through a, probably through a a, a pre-screening exam or through taking a short course on 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 training you on how to take a MOOC, then maybe if if you don't co don't complete that course, I mean you you don't you're not capable of taking a MOOC. I mean that's that's simple. That's simple. It's I don't think there's any work around that. I, I would I would I would just I wouldn't just say hey uh, we only have a thousand spots I think you have to earn it so I, I w that's one of the things I would I would change that remember we we are we are creatures that need some kind of 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 um, prodding or 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 um, something to motivate us so uh, one one motivation would be well if I I pass this then I'll be able to get into the MOOC and then that means that I'm I'm a person capable of taking a MOOC and, and I think that would add some value to it. So <coughs> uh, MOOCs right now run on a cycle so probably a course uh, is, is, is uh, uh, run two times a, 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 a year. I think they have the resources to run more times. Uh, in, in fact I think they have the resources to run three parallel courses for example with three different instructors. I think they're at that point, and so I, I don't see a, a, a any reason of why you would have to run one course with with so many students enrolled. Um, that would uh, make the courses more manageable. So, uh, but again, uh, um, it it looks nice when you s when you say, "Hey, I have fifty thousand people enrolled," but uh, but that doesn't mean anything. <coughs> So by reducing the enrollment, by reducing uh, uh, and increasing the number of courses that you can run at the same time, then you can increase the is interaction student contact time. I think that's very important. I mean, it's been shown in research that the students need to have some kind of contact with the, with the instructor. They need to feel, they, they, they have to feel that they have, that the instructor knows what they're doing, that they are, that they are paying attention to what the student is doing. That motivates the student to keep going on the course and, and and that that's not happening in MOOCs and, and uh, unfortunately many MOOCs uh, uh, again uh, the instructor only um, int intervenes a couple of times during the whole course or, 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 or a few times only and most of the time it's, it's a contact through mail and and, and I don't think uh, I don't think that's a very good um, uh, um, instructional method so uh, with this, I would like to conclude my video. And again, thank you for, for uh, watching and listening. Please leave your feedback in my, m in my, uh, in my blog, and, and I will try to answer any question. Again, um, uh, thank you for listening, and I'll see you then. Bye.